Hello everyone. I hope that you all are doing well. Um, I hope that you're healthy and happy and keeping up with things. Um, I know this is a difficult time for everybody, but um, if uh, you need any help with your NTIs, please contact me and I'll help you the best I can. Uh, you probably heard the news about school being out until the rest of the year. I was really hoping that we would come back because I would like to see you all again. Um, we'll see how next year goes, but if you're able, come by and see me and let me know how you're doing. Um, well, what I'd like to do is uh, talk about types of reactions in chemistry. So I've got a few demonstrations for you, and um, I wanted to go over the types of reactions. Um, in the types of reactions, I'm going to review balancing equations and several other things. But I want you to know about the types of reactions. Now there's a lot. Um, there's a lot that are called redox reactions when you have one that one element that gains and loses. Well, our synthesis reactions are basically redox. You have neutralization reactions where you mix an acid with a base and they neutralize each other. But for the basic chemistry, we're going to take a look at five different types of reactions. So these are the types of reactions that we're going to cover. You've got synthesis, decomposition, single replacement, double replacement, and then combustion. A combustion can be one of two types. It could be complete combustion or incomplete combustion, and I'll show you how to tell the difference. Let's talk about synthesis reactions first. Well, synthesis reactions are also called combination because you're combining different elements or you're combining compounds and you're making something more complex. So let's say you have an element or a compound A, we'll call it, because we don't know what it is. And then we mix that with B, which could be an element or a compound. And then we have them react. Now, the conditions of reaction, it just depends. It could um, react as soon as they touch each other or you might have to add water to get them to dissolve. You have to, may have to use a catalyst or maybe you have to heat them up or expose them to light. Um, so those are gonna combine in some way and then you're gonna have A, B together. So here you would have, you know, like um, sodium plus chlorine or sodium and chlorine. And over here, you're gonna have sodium, not chlorine. Sodium chlorine indicates that there's still elements. So when they react, then you're going to call them sodium chloride. Okay, so some examples rusting. Um, happen to have this, you know, old uh, wrench and or pliers. Um, and you can see it's got a lot of rust on it. Okay, so what's happened is that the coating has come off and then it's exposed the iron underneath. Usually it's chromium or zinc coating. Okay, so here I'm going to see the color of the rust. Now, what did the iron react with? Well, it had to be the, uh, the, the oxygen from the air. Now, normally oxygen and iron take a long time to react, and so you have rust developing very slowly. However, if you leave it out in the uh, elements and you get water on it, it's going to accelerate that process so you get it, you know, um, more quickly. All right, so let's take a look at the reaction of the process of rusting. Okay, so you know what the symbol for iron is. It comes from the old Latin term ferrum. And so on your periodic table, you see Fe. And then I'm going to mix that. So I'm going to put a plus sign, indicate that it's this is separate from what I'm mixing it with. And what did we say? We said oxygen. Now, oxygen is one of those compounds where it is not a single element. So when you have oxygen, if you had biology, you might probably remember this, that oxygen is a diatomic element. Now on this beautiful little ion sheet, I have up here at the top, and you'll notice the diatomic elements. Okay, the diatomic elements, there's seven of them. Let's see if I can get this in focus. Now the diatomic elements you have You've got all of these, which you've got basically the first four of the halogens. And then you've got hydrogen, nitrogen, and oxygen, which are components of air. So as you see, oxygen 
when it's in its elemental form, when it's by itself, you have to put a two on there because it's like they was being born as a twin. Okay, and then I want to put an arrow to indicate that something's happening. There's a chemical reaction. The bonding is taking place. Okay, so now I'm going to put the iron and the oxygen together. Okay, now comes my problem. I can't just leave it like that. I have to verify the charges. Remember when we wrote ionic, uh, ionic formulas and compounds? Now you're going to have to do that again. So you're going to have to remember how to do um, ionic formulas and covalent formulas. Well, I know that this is an ionic compound. How do I know that? Because iron's a metal. If you have a metal in there, then you're going to have an ionic compound. Now, if you really want to be specific, then you're going to take the electronegativities, which are found on the back of that sheet right here, subtract the electronegativities of oxygen and iron, and don't multiply by two because there's two irons. So iron and, and oxygen, just take that um, and you can see if it's an ionic or not. Um, if it is 0.4 above, it's not, uh, well, I'll go into that later. Let me stick to the point. Okay, so now it's an ionic compound, so let's look at the charges. So oxygen's charge, if you remember, it's in group six of the periodic table. It's a, it's a non-metal, and so we're going to subtract eight from the group number, which is six. So it has six valence electrons. It needs two more in order to complete its octet. So if it's gaining electrons, it's negative. So I've got a two negative charge on oxygen. Iron, I either have a plus three or a plus two. So I could have two different compounds. Now, I don't know which of them it is. It, the reaction doesn't tell me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do both. Okay, so oxygen is still negative two. Iron could be plus three or it could be plus two. So let's see what the two different compounds are. Okay, remember that if the charges don't equal, what do we have to do? Crisscross. And so this two comes down to the bottom. I don't I ignore the negatives and positives. So that positive, I ignore it. I'm just gonna bring the three down. Okay, so now the three comes down, the two comes down, and I can get rid of these now. All right, on the other one, I have a two plus and a two minus. When they equal each other, then it's just one of each. And I can get rid of these, and those are my two formulas. So how do I know the difference? Well, I happen to know that regular rust, this has kind of a coppery color. So coppery red, and I happen to know that this one is black. So it depends on what kind of rust you have. Um, if you have normal rust, it's usually red kind of a reddish brown color. Um, and then if you have the black rust, it's usually found where there's not a lot of oxygen because you notice this one has more oxygen than this one does proportionally. If you ever looked at a real, an old barn nail, for example, and snapped it in half, if you, if you, you know, if it's rusted enough, you can snap it in half. Around the outside, typically you get the reddish rust color and on the inside, you'll have like a black compound. And that is going to be this. And so that's how you know uh, what it's going to form. You have to do the work. That's what I like about chemistry is because it's like a puzzle. And also it pulls on a lot of different knowledge that you have. And so this reactions I'm so excited about because I get to, you know, show you how to figure out what's going to happen and how to write things just like nature says to. All right, so we're gonna come back to this. Some other examples of synthesis, you've got photosynthesis from a plant. Uh, you probably remember CO2 and water from the atmosphere form glucose and oxygen. Uh, you've got aspirin, for example, people synthesize aspirin from other compounds and they're making a more complex compound. You know, synthesizing of medicine. Acid rain is one, well, if you have a factory that puts out a certain type of pollution, for example, if you have SO3, uh, especially uh, burning tires, you know, when tires get set on fire, uh, what they've done is they vulcanize the, the rubber to make 
you know, uh, make it more stable. Well, when they burn it, the sulfur compounds come off. And what that does is it mixes with water in the atmosphere and it's going to produce a combination reaction, synthesis reaction. All right, so let's put these two together. Okay, H2SO4. Okay, let's check the charge. Let's make sure this is right, because I may or may not have a two there. Remember, hydrogen is plus one. It's a metal and it's on the uh, metal side. It loses one electron. What's this called? Sulfate. And sulfate has a charge of two minus. Again, you can look that up on your ion sheet. Right here on the back. Okay, so let's check and see. Now this four is part of the sulfate, so I don't want to mess with it. And you can write parentheses if you want to. I typically don't. So I have two plus on this side. It has to balance out. Well, H is one plus, but there's two of them. So that balances out and my reaction is complete. This is sulfuric acid, which sulfuric acid is a pretty strong acid. If, if you're into cars, that's usually what's inside your car battery. Okay, let's take a look at the problems that I left you in the book. If you have not done them yet, then I want you to pause the video. I want you to go do them. I, put, I copied the pages and posted them on uh, my Google Classroom. Um, if you have a book, then go look at the book. And when you've done them, come back. Okay, for those of you who, are, who, who did them and practiced, let's check your answers. Okay, so I've got BE, beryllium, plus oxygen, and it's already written with the two, you know, so I don't have to remember that it's diatomic. It's done for me, but I should remember. And let's put them together. So I've got BE, O, and I could put the two there or not. That, that depends. You, it, it doesn't matter sometimes as long as you check it. Okay, don't just write the two and walk away. You have to do the work. You have to take a look and see, is that written correctly? All right, so let's look at beryllium, and beryllium is a 2 plus on the periodic table. Um, look at oxygen. Oxygen is in group 6, so it is 2 minus. Okay, so 2 plus and 2 minus, they cancel out. So why do I need this 2? This 2 just messes things up. So I would have 2 minus and 2, that's 4 minus. Okay, so what I want to do is erase that 2. Now I have two plus, two minus, and now it is correct. Okay, um, let's go ahead and balance it. Okay, I'm gonna get rid of these at the top just so it's not confusing me. Now when you balance equations, you want the same number of atoms on both sides of that arrow. Because if you start with one atom of beryllium, you wanna end up with one atom of beryllium. You can't just have two magically appear. For example, here I've got two oxygens that I'm starting with, and I have to have that two there because that's what oxygen looks like in its elemental form. Okay, so oxygen, I've got two of them. Down here I have only one. But if I put the two here, you saw that that's not correct. I can't do that because it messes up my correct formula. So I can't stick it in the middle. The only thing I can do is put it in the front of this whole compound. Okay, so now I have two oxygens because this two multiplies both of these, All right? So two oxygens. Now this two also multiplies the beryllium. So now I have to come back over here and I can't put the two down here because that would indicate that they're stuck together and those atoms are not stuck together. So I put it in front and now I have two separate atoms of beryllium. Two beryllium's, two beryllium's. Two oxygens, two oxygens. And now, this is balanced. Good. Done the work. Okay, let's try the next one. Now, this one gives you a word equation. Word equations are the hardest because you have to look at your ion sheet, you have to look at your periodic table, and you have to try to remember a lot of things to put it all together. Okay, so we're forming formation. Okay, so if I'm forming it, I'm going to put it on the left side because this is what I start with, this is what I wind up with. So you gotta be careful about reading it. Formation of magnesium nitrite. Now they've already given you the formula, but let's check it anyway. 
Because books and teachers can be wrong sometimes. All right, magnesium is A2+. Nitrogen, that's in group 5. So 5 minus 8, that gives me 3 negative. Okay, if I crisscross, that 3 comes down, that 2 comes down. Well, okay, they, they did it right. It's verified. So this is going to go over here. All right, then it says it's formed from its elements. Well, what elements make it up? Well, magnesium. Now, here you have to be careful because from the elements, that means they're separate. Over here, they're together. Over here, they've got to be separate. So magnesium plus, it's very important you put that plus sign in there. And then nitrogen. Uh, there's something I need to check. Let's go over and look at my diatomic list. Okay, do you see nitrogen on there? You should. So nitrogen is diatomic. What that means is that these two nitrogens are stuck together. Now over here, this is not, there's a two there, but it's not because it's diatomic. It cannot be diatomic if it's in a compound. So this two isn't because it's diatomic. This two is because it's not in a compound, it's separate. So you should have MG. I did not see MG on that list of seven, so I'm just going to put MG with no numbers. If there were another number, three or four, it would tell me. So man magnesium plus nitrogen, and then this. I've checked to see that this is the correct formula. I've checked for diatomics. Two things you must do before you balance. Must, must. All right, so let's count them. One magnesium on this side, three on that side. So I need to put a three here, but I cannot put it down at the bottom. If I do, that means these three magnesium are stuck together, and that's not true. So I'm going to put a three in front, so three magnesiums, and then two, ni two nitrogens, two nitrogens. That's done. So we're good. So hopefully you got those right. All right. Um, thank you so much for watching. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make another video and I will show you some of the other, uh, some demonstrations that I've got. So I hope you are well. I miss you. I really say that. I really miss you. I mean that. I miss seeing you all. I miss interacting with you all. I miss seeing the light bulbs go off. And I, I'm very sad about what's happened. But we'll get through it and try to focus on yourselves and try to focus on, you know, being, being better, being more compassionate, reaching out to your family. And I love you all. Until next time.